Wong Tai rescues Jeanette Burton from the Chamber of Serpents in the city of Tor and conceals her in his own quarters in the palace. While in the Shan's palace in Rautor, Darno, the Shan, and Ukar find that the renegades Temur and Poltar have fled, intending to deliver the Shan's war plans to Atea. Meanwhile, Tarzan and O'Rourke and Kailuk have eluded the pursuing Taurians and are making their way through the deserted streets of Tor toward the elephant paddocks. A distant gong sounds. Kailuk explains that it is the lion gong warning Taurians from the streets. Atea is preparing to release her savage hunting lions. While seeking an unguarded section of the paddock wall, Tarzan and his companions are suddenly confronted by a huge lion. With a roar, the half-starved beast launches itself in a rushing charge straight at Kailuk. The Ratorian glances over his shoulder at the distant buildings, his only refuge. Don't run, Kailuk. You can't make it. Frieda! Frieda! As the fierce challenge of the bull ape rings out to mingle with the lion's roar, Tarzan, quick as a leopard, springs forward to thrust Kailuk out of the path of Numa's hurtling charge. Frieda! Frieda! Before the great jungle cat can turn and gather himself for a second charge, the ape man lands full upon the brute's back. Corded bronzed arm encircles the tawny throat. Raised from behind, Numa roars furiously. His mighty talons paws beat and slash the air as Tarzan's keen knife buries itself again and again in the unprotected left side. Finally, with a last choking cough, Numa sinks lifeless to the ground. Got to get out of this in a hurry. Look down there at the end of the strait. Guards, plenty of them. Yes. It's our friend Mungo and a company of his men. Come on. Round this corner, then over the paddock wall. Hurry. Quick, I look, my lad. Don't stand looking at Tarzan. I know just how you feel. He did the same for me once. Come on, or them fellows will be on your neck. Here. Over the wall, Kailuk. Up, O'Rourke. Sure, and you'll have to give me a hand. <coughs> Drop down inside, before those men reach the corner. Holy St. Patrick, out of the frying pan into the fire. Here comes that big devil, Black Maluk. He's trumpeting sure he'll bring the guards. Tantor, Tan Panda. Oh, Maluk, Tan Panda. Well, be quiet now. Come on, into the shed before the elephant men come. Ah, big gurry. And that was a narrow escape, my lads. Fate and I feel as if I'd been dragged through a rough knot hole. Uh, you can rest now, O'Rourke. Mungo and his men have passed. Later, when the hunt for us is quieted down and it's quite dark, I'll go to the jewel pits. And... Ah, ye men will go to the jewel pits. He'll not be leaving Terry O'Rourke out of your plans. Nor can I look, Tarzan of the Apes. For delivering him from the fangs of the lion, Kaluk owes you his life. When the time comes, he will repay the debt. You owe me nothing, Kailuk. Your friendship is enough. Now, get some rest, both of you. <laughs> rest, did he say? <laughs> With guards and lions prowling the straits looking for us? <laughs> Them elephant men are liable to make four out of two and two and stick their yellow faces in here while we're asleep. Not likely. Pantor will warn us. If anyone comes to the shed, it would probably be Mongo, since Black Maluk seems to be his mouth. Now, sleep if you can. I'll watch. Meanwhile, Atea, eagerly awaiting word that Tarzan and his companions have been run to earth and killed by her hunting lions, restlessly paces the floor of her apartment. Bland, inscrutable Wong Tai watches her and listens as she boasts of the savage infallibility of her tawny hunters. No, Wong Tai. 
The hunting lions of Thor have never failed to accomplish that for which they are kept. And yet the illustrious one has seen Tarzan kill the great guardian lion of the treasure vault with nothing but a knife. A strong, fearless man may accomplish such a feat once, even twice through a fortunate accident. However, the beast was not a hunter. No, my friend. I'll soon be well rid of this Tarzan, this king of the apes. I was a fool to allow myself to be humiliated by him as long as I did. Well, as far as Jeanette Burton is concerned, it is finished. And soon will be with Tarzan and his companions. None have ever escaped alive from the Chamber of Servants. Nor yet from Toldo, the hunting lion. And Mungo, heaven-born. What of Mungo? Will he not be greatly disappointed in not being the mediums through which Tarzan will have met his death? Thereby winning Janet Burton as his mate? <laughs> Mungo would soon have tired of her. He shall fight instead a Ratorian slave and have his choice of my serving women. Speaking of your women, Majesty, has the key to the treasure vault been found yet? No, that key has been stolen. And when I find the thief, you, Wang Tai. I, heaven born. Did I not grant you the authority to come and go where you would in the palace? In search of this strangely missing ah, key? Yes, Majesty. You did grant this person such authority. But in the excitement of the past day or two, the matter has been overlooked. This one shall make it his immediate business to begin the search. Who comes? Enter. Now, Mungo, you bring news of Tarzan? The hunting lions have brought him down? Holdo found Tarzan, Oruk, and Kailuk the Ratorian. Toldo is dead. Tarzan killed him. What? Tarzan of the apes killed a hunting lion? But that is impossible, Mungo. No, Mungo see. Tarzan killed Toldo with knife. But you have captured him and his companions. No, they escaped after Tarzan killed Toldo. Where did this happen? By Elephant Parrox. Ah, the Elephant Parrox. And you have searched for them in the Parrox, Mungo? Aru. Yes, no find them. Find them, Mungo. If you wish to live beyond tomorrow's sunset, search every building in Tor, every room in every building. Find them. And when you do, bring me proof of their death. Go. Aru got there. You were right, Wang Tai. This Tarzan of the Apes is unconquerable. Oh, by Pantu, with such a man as King of Tor. But die he must and will. If he will not remain here with me, he shall not leave Tor alive. It is not ineptly written, illustrious one, that he who overcomes others is strong. But he who overcomes himself is mightier still. Then you believe, Wang Tai, that I have not overcome myself? This person believes nothing, Majesty. He merely expressed aloud a thought. And now, with the permission of the presence, this one will retire and commence his search for the missing key to the treasure vault? Yes. Go, Wang Tai. I, I wish to be alone. Leaving Atea's apartment... The wily Chinese hastens back through the dimly lighted, deserted corridors of the palace to his own quarters, where Jeanette Burton, wakeful and anxious, awaits word of Tarzan and his two companions. Oh, thank heaven you've come back, Dr. Wong. What have you learned of Terry and the others? Safe? All of them. Oh. They have so far escaped the capture and death. And as I surmised, have not left the city. But come, I shall tell you as we go. Go? Where are we going at this time of the night? To inspect our illustrious queen's treasure vault. And there is no time like the present. But, but must I go with you? Suppose we're seen. Everyone but a few of the palace guards sleep. They will not see us. If they should, I have full authority to come and go as I please. But... But, Dr. Wong, I don't want You to. have made a bargain, my dear. You will keep it. Come now, hurry. We must be back here by daylight. Meanwhile, in the little shed at the rear of Black Maluk's corral in the elephant paddocks, Tarzan and his two companions discuss plans for the release of the jewel pit slaves. 
Now, oh, what with them hungry lions prowling the streets and Mungo and his men on the watch for us, uh, we are going to have a sweet time getting hold of them jewel pits, you know, Tarzan, my lad. Therefore, I suggest that you and Kylo wait right here. I'll get the slaves and pick you up on the way back to the palace. Ah, you're stepping out of line again, my friend. That suggestion's been vetoed by both Kylo and myself, and we won't go over it again. No, Rook is right, Tarzan. We will all go. Once in the jewel pits, three can work more surely and quickly than one. All right, have it your way. Well, what's the plan of action in the jewel pits? In general, we release the slaves from their chains in the bunks. You know where the keys to those chains are? Sure, and I've seen them there often enough. They hang from into the doors of the slave sheds. Right. In case we're surprised by the guards, get those keys and unlock each man as you come to him, while Kyluk and I hold off the guards. Once a shed full of them slaves are let loose, they can arm themselves with the weapons of the guards or anything else handy, eh? Right. We crossed the city to the jewel pits as we came here, Tarzan, by way of the housetops? Not unless we have to. All we'll have to look out for now will be Numa, Atea's hunting lions, and a few guards. Yes, everyone else will be dead to the world in sleep. If we can keep out of the way of them lions, we can easily avoid the guards. It should be near midnight now. We'll get over the paddock wall just back of this shed, the same place we got in. It's time to go. Ready? I am well, ready, friend. Me, lad, yes. Come on, then. Holy St. Patrick. It is as dark out here as the inside that shed. Begotty, I don't like... Look out, Tarzan! The guards! Oh, big Gary. The devils were sneaking up on us. Here they come. Bongo find you. Bongo kill now. Back to the wall, O'Rourke. Kailu. Leading his guards, Mungo, with a shout of savage joy, his great sword raised high for the death blow, springs directly toward the waiting ape man. Free! 